Hey gang. So after many idle threats, <laughs> I am finally here doing some calligraphy. I'll be re I'll bring you in real close in just a minute. Okay, let's get legal. My name's Dan, Daily Art Adventure. 550, woo! <laughs> That's just for fun, of course. Um, I'm in my kitchen. Let me do just a little bit more of this and aim you down so you can partly see what I'm doing. I'm gonna bring you over to a much better angle in just a minute. Hang on for a second. Let me, let me do a little bit more before I do that. So I'm doing um, copper plate script, white ink on dark brown paper. These are addresses for a marketing old-fashioned <coughs> snail mail through the post office that is uh, marketing package that I put together for my wedding painting business and as I said I've got I'll bring you over to a better camera angle in just a minute Ah, a little bit of chatter there while my pen was going uphill. Um, caught the paper and chattered a little bit. That's not a good thing. Okay, let me let me move you guys. Hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, there. Now, let's make sure you're pointed in the right direction. Well, let's back up and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about, show you a little bit of my workspace here. Uh, again, kitchen table. Um, why? Because actually, uh, well, for one thing, all the kids are gone. So <laughs> all the grandkids are not in the house. So I have the freedom to work down here, but I like the flat surface. Ironically, ironically, for copper plate, um, many times flat works better and um, I'm using the green masking tape oh, there see I shouldn't have stopped right in the middle of that letter those two ends do not match at all that's the cardinal sin of calligraphy I'm gonna finish the letter X anyway why am I whispering? That's easy. <laughs> it's because I'm doing calligraphy, that's why. <sighs> okay, let me remove this piece of tape carefully and then finish the letter F that has a D sender that I couldn't draw when the tape was in the way. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, how many of you caught it before I did? Okay, so there's the cardinal sin of calligraphy, which is having letters, especially if they're next to each other, that don't match at all. That was partly because I took a break and talked. That, that was a mistake. That, that's the cardinal sin. But the most common stupid thing to do is leave a letter out. <laughs> it, it's most certainly not left bank. It's left bank annex. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> tell you what, let me show you. So here's some of the work that I've done earlier this evening. Um, I'll zoom so you can see that better. There, did all those tonight. Did not do these tonight, but 
That's that's the, this is called copper plate script. I am most certainly not. I want you to understand this. I am not an expert or a professional uh, calligrapher. I'm a hobbyist, and I'm a fair to middle in calligrapher at best. Just to just to give you a, a sense of where I fit in the calligraphy world, it's a hobby. Um, and I do it mostly for fun. I've done it for money a few times. Now, I do, I'm, I do, I've done what I call commercial calligraphy many times throughout my career. And um, one of the differences is with commercial calligraphy, <laughs> you can use your um, Photoshop <laughs> to correct things. Okay, L. E F T let's not forget the T this time uh, you see that I'm working on a, a I don't know what the stuff is called kind of a plasticky uh, tablecloth material I mean tape placemat material and it works really well. You do not want to do calligraphy on a hard surface. You want a little bit of give. And I discovered these little cheap little old placemats are perfect. Okay, and the ink that I'm using is Windsor Newton Calligraphy ink. And uh, I've got a bowl of water here for when I need to get my pen cleaned up. I've got a paper towel here. Um, I also have a stack of uh, scrap. When I cut out this brown paper, I ended up with little scrap pieces. And when I f sat down tonight, uh, the very first thing that I, these these are all rejects or practice. Uh, but before I even started, I just started doing stuff um, on the on those scrap pieces. Let's let's get back to the job at hand now. If I were to say one thing about calligraphy is that you have to be extremely present minded. And for that reason, I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to broadcast and do calligraphy at the same time. As you saw, I already screwed up once. Calligraphy is fun. I really do enjoy it. And part of the reason is because in order to do calligraphy, you have to be relaxed. No relax, no calligraphy. So if you want to do calligraphy, you have to get in the zone. <laughs> and for that reason, it, it really is uh, you achieve... I don't, how else to say it better than just you re achieve a meditative state simply by doing calligraphy. Oh, 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 another chatter. Oh, that is not very good. Let me zoom you in so you can see my warts and all. See that little line right there? That's bad. That's because I'm not really very good at this. And um, to tell you the truth, um, I'm, I'm better at all the other forms of calligraphy. Um, chancery, cursive, italic, uh, black letter, um, and so forth. In fact, several years ago, I actually put out several DVDs. I'm not sure they're still available. I did it through Jerry's Adorama. Um, but I put out five DVDs um, where I was teaching calligraphy. And, and again, I made it very clear that I was not a, an expert, but I was a pretty good teacher. At least that's still, I'm inclined to think that still. Anyway, and um, I did not do um, 
what's this called? Copper plate. I did not do copper plate because I'm not good enough. It's my worst. I'm, I'm worse at copper plate than anything else. But that's what I'm doing right here. Partly because I need to practice. Finish the F here. Now, I'll show you a little trick. Are you still zoomed in? Yeah, you are. I have here a, a knife, sharp knife. And I, would, I wouldn't mind having a magnifying glass right now, but I don't have one, so I'll just do it with my glasses on. I'm gonna scratch through that little mistake that I made a while ago. It's still not perfect, but it's uh, much better. And uh, since this is just uh, an address label, that's that. That's being my standard. This this is not super duper fantastic calligraphy. This is just good enough calligraphy. Okay, the address is 101 North Widler Street. Okay, so let's now I do fancy here at the top and a simpler form of um, copper plate down here. So before I started broadcasting tonight, I got all set up and got ready to broadcast. And then my pen, ink, paper started misbehaving. So that, that gives me a good opportunity to talk to you about, in a way, what is it that makes calligraphy work, I mean, function, uh, succeed. Uh, I wish someone had told me this when I was a teenager. Hang on just a second, okay, the letter north, I mean the word north. Um, if you do not have a sweet and synergistic relationship, north, N-O-R, if you don't have a sweet synergistic relationship between the pen, the ink, and the paper, it is not going to go well. All three must be in sync. So uh, for about half an hour before I started this broadcast, and before I started this broadcast, I was quite irritated. Hang on a second, North. Widler, W-E-I-D-L-E-R, North Widler. Um, w. So it turns out I discovered what had happened. Um, I started doing calligraphy. This is a brand new bottle. Just bought it last week. Started doing calligraphy an hour ago. It was going great. And I have a brush that I was using. I'll show you later how I use the brush. Anyway, I dipped it in there, discovered that that the uh, calligraphy ink had settled, even though I'd shaken it up. I'd already shaken it up, but it had still settled. So I stirred it, stirred it, stirred it. Didn't realize that that's when all my problems started. Because what had happened is this ink is too thick for this pen and this paper. Are you understanding what I'm saying? In order for calligraphy to work, you have to have three items that work. To, I use the word synergistic. Three things that work together. The ink, the pen, the paper, the paper, the ink, the paper and the pen, the pen and the ink, the pen and the, the ink and the paper. All three have to be in sync. And if you change your paper, you might have to change your pen or your ink. If you change your ink, you might have to change your pen or your paper. If you change your paper, you might have to change your ink or your pen. Are, are you with me? So what happened earlier this evening is it was working, then I stirred it up and it stopped working because it was too thick. And I was just, us, oh, just irritated. And then finally, I th I, it dawned on me that, wait a minute, maybe my problem started. Maybe the ink is too thick. So sure enough, that's exactly what the problem was. So I got my spray bottle and I sprayed a, a couple squirts of water into the top of this bottle and that I'm not gonna shake it up, I'm not gonna stir it up, I'm just gonna let it be just the way it is because now it's working. 
just fine. Ah, look at that, ran out of ink right, on, right in the, I knew I was stretching. I knew I was trying to go a little bit too far. How do you know, you know how many letters you can do with one load of ink? The answer is you don't. Uh, the answer is you get a feel for it after a while. And again, every day it's different. I, I imagine even atmospheric perspective could affect how all these things play together. Street, S-T-R. See, so there, I got an S, a T, and a half an R. Now the best time to run out is like that on a downstroke. There, I got a little bit of chatter again, fixed it. Ah, ran out again, but fortunately it was on a downstroke, so it, it's not too hard to blend that in and start, start the stroke again. I'm going to bring this stem of the end down just a tiny bit. This is cheating, what you just see me doing right there. That's, you know, I'm, you're not supposed to have to do that. But if you can get away with it, <laughs> it's okay. Now let me make sure I spell, make sure I spell it. North Widler Street, yes. What city? Portland, Oregon. Portland. And as you can see, I'm, most of the time on, on this, I'm writing everything out longhand, not, not abbreviating north or street. Uh, just adds a slight, slight degree of formality. Um, so a little bit more. So what are all, what what are all these places? These are all these are uh, about 120 of the um, highest rated wedding venues all over the country. That's who I'm sending these packages to. I have no idea if it'll pay off. No idea at all. Okay, Portland, Oregon. Do you notice I'm going slowly? <laughs> oh, okay. Now my pen, I, I put my pen down and it didn't, didn't work, right? So fix number one, that's what the bowl is here for. Just dip the tip in the bowl and then very often now it'll work. I still didn't, okay? So more ink, now let's see if it works. Relax, yeah. You cannot get irritated. You just cannot let yourself get irritated. Whoops. Okay, so here's a mistake, and I'm just going to let it go. That P is too big, so... You know, if this was a... Like I said, a really important piece of calligraphy, that I wouldn't allow, allow a mistake like that. But I'm being rather sloppy here because it's just a mailing address. Okay, I'm going to show you now. For, for, and I look forward to reading your chats very much. This is very different for me, isn't it? Um, I'll show you what I'm doing, what I do with this brush. This is, you know, I've studied calligraphy just enough to be dangerous. If, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, there, there are some people online that are just so freaking good at this. It's just scary, just absolutely scary how good they are. Um, okay, so I hold this pin here, and instead of dipping this in there, most of the time, I can just do that. And then it's less of an interruption to my zen-like focus and concentration but it doesn't hold as much ink when you do it that way so you have to go back and dip more often but usually it's worth it okay there we go okay so there's a little trick for some of you portland oregon o r Of course, it would be very easy to flick, you know, to up with this right here. If I go, if 
it'll spatter ink, of course, onto my artwork. And that would not be a happy moment. Oh, ask me, ask me how many times do I f get partway through one of these addresses and screw up and have to start over or decide that it wasn't good enough? Well, here, I'll answer that part of that question right now because there it says left bank annex, right? You guys saw me mess up here, left out the letter T. You didn't see me do this. I did this and then just looked at it and said, nah, that's too ugly. So this is my third attempt. And if I don't screw up real bad on the zip code, the postal code, then this one will be done. Uh, um, he, a couple things about calligraphy. I already said you have to be in a zen-like mood. Okay, hang on. 97227. 97227. I'm going to stop talking for a minute because I'll mess up here if I don't. So hang on. 97227. Okay, shh. little pressure here because I've got two twos right next to each other. Those are supposed to look the same and they don't quite. Darn. That's because I'm not very good. <laughs> Let's just be honest here. If I, if I try to fake you guys out or fake anybody out and try to pretend that I'm really good at this, then I'll be really terrified and embarrassed when I mess up. But the fact is, I'm just not that good. So there you go. That's, but that's good enough for address. Part of the reason I'm doing this is, of course, most people don't open junk mail, you know, unsolicited marketing. I'm just hoping. The whole package looks beautiful, by the way, not just the address label. Uh, maybe I'll show it to you, but I didn't, I didn't bring it up. Um, the ad, this, these address labels go inside a transparent window on the front of the envelope. They're, they're not on the outside, they're on the inside. All right, so I get to stroke this one off. Woohoo! Check it off. Longview Gallery, Washington, D.C. Longview Gallery. Okay. So I'm going to try the brush approach again. Oh, let me show you one other thing I, I sometimes do. I don't do it every time, but to help me uh, get the lowercase letters, I actually use pencil guidelines. All right, that's what the these rulers are great for that. All right, long view gallery. Oh, so I was going to, I started to tell you and I interrupted myself to do a zip code. Um, you have to get relaxed. One of the amazingly good things, fun things about calligraphy is pretty much till you just get exhausted. The longer you sit at one sitting and do it, the better you get. In other words, in other words, if I were to sit here for another hour and a half, I would get better and better and better. until exhaustion kicks in, then of course, then it, all bets are off. Also, if I were to do calligraphy for an hour, and I've already done it for more than an hour today, if I were to come back and do calligraphy, any kind of calligraphy again, tomorrow, long view, okay, um, I would find my skills tomorrow, noticeably better than they were when I started today. Now. If I quit here in 20, 30 minutes and go to bed and then come back and do calligraphy tomorrow, I'll find I've gotten rusty overnight, but not as rusty as I was when I started today. Does that make sense? Um, but tomorrow, it may only take me 10 or 15 minutes for my skills to be back up to where they were when I finished 
after maybe an hour or two today. Does that make sense? The, the point is calligraphy, you can see immediate improvement in your skill. It's, it's really, really quite delightful. I don't know anything else in life that you can literally get better in one sitting. You can watch yourself get better. And part of it has to do with this, this zen-like, relaxed state that you get into. Um, and of course, I'm belying that right now by talking to you guys while I'm trying to do calligraphy. So I am, I am not in a, I'm not as focused as I ought to be because I'm talking to you. Um, that's not a bad long view, though, is it? Long view gallery. Um, when you do calligraphy, to do it well, you have to be ridiculously present-minded. You don't think the future. You don't think the past. You think the very, very split second that you're in, in if you want to do it well. Okay, G. I haven't done a G yet tonight, so I'm a little bit rusty on Gs. Oh, by the way, that's that's why I've got um I've got a book sitting right here. See, I'm so bad at calligraphy that I still use I still use the 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 you know somebody else's samples to to help me get get it straight. Okay, gallery, let's try. Uh-oh, I lost where I was going. Oh my goodness, this is not a, a proper G at all, but I'm going to try to finish it. I'm going to finish the word and then you and I will decide if I can get away with that irregular G. In other words, my G doesn't match the, you know, the official one I'm looking at. So what am I supposed to be thinking right now? Right now, I'm supposed to be thinking upswing, down, curve, press, down. That's what I'm supposed to be thinking, nothing else. That's also why it's so easy to misspell words because you're not thinking even, you're not even thinking letters. You're thinking curves, straights, shapes, thick, thin, up, down, so on and so forth. Okay, let's look at that. I think I can get away with that G, don't you? Yeah, it's irregular, but who cares? All right, now, Long View Gallery, <laughs> one, two, three, four, Ninth Street Northwest. Okay, now, in this case, I am gonna abbreviate Northwest because if you know Washington, D.C., I mean, nobody spells out the word Northwest, but anyway. One, two, three, four, <laughs> that's a funny address. One, two, three, four, Ninth Street. Okay, and how much, one, two, three, four, Ninth Street, Northwest. I'm trying to guess. One, two, three, four, Ninth Street. Ninth. I also do abbreviate ninth, TH, of course. Street. I do not abbreviate street, though. Spell that out. S. Do I enjoy calligraphy? Absolutely. It's like a hobby. So just like anybody else enjoys their hobby, that's how I enjoy calligraphy. 
It's fun to try, even if I'm not good at it. And you know what I mean. I'm not. I, y'all don't have to say, "Oh no, you're really good." No, no, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm not terrible, but but um, yeah, no, I'm not good. There's guys online and girls online and everywhere that are good. I'm a fair to middling hobbyist. I know where I fit in, but it's still fun. That's what hobbies are about, isn't it? Good for mental health. I started playing around with uh, calligraphy when I was about 12 years old because I received in my stocking that Christmas a speedball calligraphy book. I still have it to this very day. Washington, D.C. And as a kid, I enjoyed trying. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. <laughs> I was a weird kid, but it wasn't that weird. I just enjoyed it a little bit. Okay, Washington, D. I'm going to end this broadcast at the end of this Washington, D.C. stuff, okay? Thanks for watching. I look forward to reading your chats every once in a while. In the corner of my eye, I see a chat flash up. I look forward to Washington, D.C. I'm not going to write out District of Columbia. <laughs> it's taken a good thing a little too far, in my opinion. So I'll just call it D.C. got really good calligraphy music playing. Have you noticed? <laughs> Very relaxing. You may have heard me say in other broadcasts that normally if I'm not broadcasting and I'm doing art, I'm painting, I'm doing artwork, washing, um, I'm, I usually listen to podcasts with talking in them. History, philosophy, um, science, other things. Those three mainly, I suppose. Washington. Um, but when I'm doing calligraphy, I can't listen to talking. Isn't that funny? Because it's too distracting. And I, I really have to focus when I'm doing calligraphy. If I listen to talking, I think my number, my amount of misspellings increase exponentially. Okay, DC, capital E, comma. Oh, let's drag this G down a little bit. Okay, D. It's a little bit big. We're gonna let it go. that it's a little bit big. Stop laughing at me. <laughs> oh, 2001. And I didn't say that. 2001. Three zeros. Oh, boy. So, in other words, a calligrapher's, an amateur calligrapher's nightmare. The same letter or number three times in a row. <laughs> That's where all my weaknesses show up when you try to do the same letter or number three times in a row. Okay, let's see what I can do. Eh, not bad. Two o o o. Not great, but not bad. All right. I'm just gonna stop there. By the way, um, there's a category of calligraphers in the world, out there in the world, called master calligraphers. I believe, last I heard, there's only 12 of them in the whole world, on the whole planet. Uh, and this is fascinating. The youngest one, hang on, I'm going to move you guys again. I'm covering up your eyes so you so you can't get, see all this jarring. There. Um, the youngest calligrapher in the world is, is a named Jake Wildman, 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 
I think it's W I D. Anyway, look him up. Calligraphy Jake, and you'll. Hey, he's he's just an absolute freak. Um, unbelievable. I mean, he, he's unbelievable, and in his, I will take if I'm really careful when it, I'll take a needed and sometimes erase. Bunch of comments. I thought, man, at 10.30, at 10 o'clock at night, nobody's going to be saying anything. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Um, for some reason, my, my, uh, we just suddenly stopped without warning. So I think we're back. I'm enjoying all these comments. Uh, Janet Kramer, it's beautiful. It's past midnight here. <laughs> Tainan says, yeah, it's not that here. So we're still getting there. Shandan Ram, it's beautiful. Thank you very much. Colby. Colby sounds like a real clear. I got a real clear front of the line. I'm glad I'm being humble, Colby, because you can see I've got a lot to talk about. Um, gouache is fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Colby says, I know the feeling so much, I'd misspell so often. I once rewrote an invitation four times. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do. But having guidelines helps a lot. I... Yeah, I get one of these rulers. They're, they're great. J. Fox. using a reference oh. right um, I mean I know if you did it you wouldn't have to but that's I'm sure um, Colby says it's my job <laughs> hey Matt's our I've just bought the 24th edition of the speedball textbook um I actually did a video for Speedball, again, about four or five years ago. Can you believe it? I mean, me? I wasn't doing copper plate, believe me, which, again, worst hand. But um, I can't even remember what I did for them, but it was to, comp you know, to go along with their, their, all their stuff is free. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Whoops. And it freaks me out. It, to be a master, go cool, Colby, man. You ought to be young. Good for you, man. <laughs> you ought to be younger than Jake Weidman. <laughs> good, go for it, man. Colby, can I find your stuff online? Can I look you up? I'll try that as soon as I quit this broadcast. Stracker, Straker, Stracker. Thank you for this moment. Thank you very much. Read it. Um, <laughs> did you saw those videos? doing them they're my most peaceful videos because <laughs> you have to be in the zone is <laughs> a job that I, has to be done I'm doing about a hundred and twenty of these and I've got about 75 or 80 of them done so I'm on the home stretch uh, but it's amazing still hard time to get it done because it's you know I'm not being paid for it Kobe, I use guidelines most of the time, but then cover up my track. <laughs> All right, thanks. It's been fun. If you like this, share and give me a thumbs up and do other wonderful things. And if you don't like it, just. <laughs> okay, thanks. Bye bye.